Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers in London. Today I'm looking at a book which has come to us from Sweet and Maxwell Thomson Reuters. It's a book which many people will know about. I've reviewed it um, over the years, the various editions. I um, haven't reviewed it for a couple of years now, but this is the new 33rd edition. It's in two volumes. It's here, volume one and volume two. It's Chitty on Contracts. Uh, the general editor is Professor Beale, who will be known to you with a huge team of contributors. Elizabeth and I discussed the book in some detail, <coughs> excuse me, and we have um, come up with a title for our book review, A Cornerstone Work of Reference on a Core Subject of the Law, now in a new edition, the 33rd. Let's just have a look at the book first of all. General Principles, Volume 1, there. There's the spine, there's nothing on the back. Uh, just opening it up so you've got some idea of uh, what we've got. There's the, um, the actual front page. They've got the word 30 spelt wrongly. You'll be pleased to know. Do have a look at that. Can't resist that. This is Volume 1 General Principles. That's the list of venerable people who have edited it, starting with Joseph Chitty Jr. in 1826, all the way up to Professor Beale today. Then a very large number of people involved all the way through. I can't mention them all. There's a note to readers as well about how you go use this book because it's in two volumes and where the indexes are. There's a preface which is very important there. You can probably see it. That preface is very important because it, it tells you what Beale and the others have put in to the new edition. Hugh Beale sort of has written the preface 30th of September 2018 and he just goes through and that's quite useful if you've used the book before as I have that's quite useful then you've got the table of contents very detailed all the way through um, and you can see the structure it's got the names of the people who've been contributing we didn't have that a few years ago but I'm very grateful we're doing that now because it it tells you who's been responsible for what running through tables of cases a uh, very large number um, then you've got, after that, you've got various other, um, just get to the end of that, after the tables of cases, you've got European cases as well, which are also included, irrespective of Brexit. Brexit runs through this book, and I'll talk about that in a minute. <coughs> Let me just show you the structure. This is chapter one, introduction. You see you've got a mini index at the beginning, and then you get into the, the main the actual main work it's itself. You've got paragraph numbering at the sides, as usual, very much the house style, and you've got footnoting. And at the back, that's the first volume, at the back, um, the first volume runs to two and a half thousand pages, you've got an index which is very detailed, and the index is by paragraph numbering. Okay, so that's volume one. Now volume two is on specific contracts, exactly the same format again at the front, Again, interesting, it's got the spelling error, 33rd edition. I'll remind you that this is the 33rd edition. You've got a little usual stuff there. Then we get again, you've got the table of statutes in volume two, table of cases in volume one, statutes in volume two. Then SIs after that, then after that European legislation. And then after that, the cap you've got cases again coming up. and. What you've got at the back is you've got a, another index at the back, which specifically for volume two, because you can buy these work, these two volumes separately. And then if you get into um, the first part of volume two, after the European cases, uh, let me just get into that. Um, let me just get to the, the main part of it here. The pages are a little flimsy as you can probably gather. This is chapter 31, Agency. Reynolds is the leading um, writer in the area, um, very, very experienced person. You can see again it's the same structure of an index of the chapter itself and then you've got the detail itself after that. And that again, this book runs again into two, nearly two and a half thousand words, so, uh, pages rather than more words. So you are talking of nearly 5,000 pages, in fact over 5,000 when you include all the other stuff. So looking at the book, here it is. I love this book. It's, it was the, one of the first law books I ever looked at when I did A-level law, which was a very long time ago. And I was advised to go for Chitty on contracts because that was where the law was. It was rather different from what it is today, 
I have to say in the late 60s and the um, early 70s because I, I actually first saw this book in 1970 um, and I, I was very impressed with it even then. Now what do we say? Well the first edition of Chitty on Contracts was by Sir Joseph Chitty. That was C, uh, Sir Joseph Chitty Jr. Came out in 1826 and how the world has changed since. There are however a few things that haven't. One of them being the fact that matters pertaining to contracts are the core of the law, bearing in mind that fundamentally a contract is or is meant to be an agreement. And we enter contracts, as I've said in my lectures and everywhere else, every day of the week. Everything we do is a contract of some sort. And the question really, because it's an agreement to do certain things, um, what are the things that, that arise as a result of it? That's why it's such a big book in two volumes. <laughs> but what publishing pedigree has Chitty? Well, for 192 years now, Chitty has, with almost unassailable authority, met the need on the part of lawyers for concise and insightful commentary on what is an often complex and relentlessly evolving area of law. It is very fundamental to what we do is in our relationship with people. It is interesting to reflect that in only seven years' time, Chitty will be embarking on its third century while remaining consistently up to date. This is where the law is to be found. It's a common law library. That is where the law is. If people ask you, that's where the law is. And now the new Chitty has arrived for 2018 in its pristine new 33rd edition, published by Sweet and Maxwell and Thomson Reuters. And it comes to us in two volumes, which I've shown you. The first of which you can purchase separately from the second. Um, the first, of course, is the general principles text in which you can find virtually every conceivable aspect of English contract law covered from agreement to damages and restitution. Now, do remember the Common Law Library, which is that it does have other other parts which are offshots, if you like, and, and more detailed areas which which are covered in Chitty. But Chitty is the main authority and it's the one we, we would normally use initially, depending on what your instructions are, because what it does it covers virtually every aspect of English contract law, from agreement to damages and restitution, as I've said. And uh, they are specialists there, and McGregor on damages and so forth. <clears throat> but the point I'm making is that this is where the everything is contained in one, one particular uh, book, even though it's two volumes. Volume two then goes into specific contracts, and it kicks off with an extensive yet precise explanation of the term agency. That's from Professor Reynolds. And, of course, agent as you're likely to find basically anywhere else. And of course, you do have the specialist books in that area as well. It's undoubtedly a book that serves to clear up the understandable confusion as to what an agent is and does, and whether or not the principles of agency law are extended to those who may be referred to as agents in common speech. Because again, there's, I think, a lot of misunderstanding about the powers and the role of an agent, and, and the liability, of course. Here, as is typical of the two volumes then, the interweaving of theoretical discourse and practical advice is of obvious advantage to practitioners and scholars alike. Most, indeed all practitioners, would agree that of all the works of reference in the Sweet and Maxwell Common Law Library, Chitty is the most important. It's the top of the list. I think it's the most, personally, I think it's the most important book law book that Sweden Max will publish. It's probably one of the most important law books we have. Uh, and I say that having looked at a very many thousands of them over the years. <coughs> Therefore, to call it a cornerstone work is probably a bit of an understatement when considering the importance of this core subject, which is a subject to change in so many areas year on year. And that's, again, one of the problems. Um, I mean, there are issues with the types of contract you enter, which cover everything that we do in society. And that may sound dramatic, but it, it is actually a, a truth. It's, so it's not overstating the case then to say that the new edition of Chitty, with its extensive updates, and remember you've got the updating service to go with it, is or should be considered essential reading for practitioners. I certainly think it is. It's not that difficult to read either. I remember people saying to me, oh, it's far too complicated. And, but the English is actually good. I didn't have a problem with it. And I think once you've understood the basics, the basic elements of a contract, and you understand a bit, it's relatively plain sailing. 
and this new edition does reflect the numerous changes that have taken place in this area of law since the previous edition in 2015. Uh, the most important and frankly earth-shattering development is obviously Brexit and in the first chapter there is certainly a terse summary on that including its present and possible future effects on contract law. I'm recording this before the end of 2018 and I have no idea what will happen on the 29th of March 2019 at the moment. But we do have Brexit and we've got to think about the implications. The editorial position until exit day, however, 29th of March 2019, is that the United Kingdom is still a member of the European Union and that the status of European Union law in the United Kingdom remains the same until the EU UK leaves the EU and that's the position the, the book is adopting. We'll wait for the next edition in three years time and see what happens. This new edition of course contains much additional new material with at least five chapters having been expanded or rewritten and to cite only a few examples chapter two has been extended to deal with liability when negotiations do not produce a contract. Chapter 35 entitled Carriage by Air, contains a new section on denied boarding cancellations and long delays. Very important uh, area for the consumer. This last no doubt delivers the definitive word on such annoyances. It's also worth noting uh, the commentary in respect of specific um, contracts uh, pertaining uh, to package travel, uh, payment services and mortgages. New cases, say the editors have brought some very significant developments. Scholarly, erudite, readable, logically organised and current, this two-volume work provides hundreds, one loses count, of pages of research references, including extensive tables of statutes, statutory instruments, European legislation, international statutory materials cases, and of course European cases. So let me just conclude by saying that it's an essential acquisition for all law libraries and there's little doubt that the 33rd edition of Chitty will give individual practitioners um, that all-important professional edge. And of course the date of publication is cited as at the autumn of 2018 and I think the law basically is applicable uh, from uh, the middle of the year. Bearing in mind that the, um, the actual uh, preface is the 30th of September but I think what because you've got a, uh, a service to go with this book you don't need to worry too much about wh what the law is. He says um, he hopes that the war is up to date that the work is up to date as at the 31st of July 2018. Um, well obviously that, that that's the current position for this but there will be obviously the um, the changes that take place between now and the next supplement that comes up. Let me just open it in the middle here. Damages for misrepresentation. There we go. Always a lovely subject. You can see the this is the middle of the book here. You've got you've got the standard thing, you've got the paragraph numbering at the sides. You can see the actual uh, footnoting there. And then you've got a huge amount of detail. You've got subheadings and you should be able to find anything you're particularly looking for. This is actually dealing with that is damages for misrepresentation, contributory negligence. Uh, Headley, Byrne and Heller is mentioned, of course, a lot of detail there. So all the usual favourites will be there. I'm really delighted to be able to review this book. Um, it's a special. It has a special place for me uh, because it's the first big law book I ever read. And um, I do believe it's, uh, bearing in mind, um, the Common Law Library is uh, a first-class library. Um, I've said it before and I'll end by saying this is where the law is. It's where the common law is. We couldn't do our jobs in any, any uh, capacity as lawyers, judges, whatever it might be, academics, without having reference to this material. And Hugh Beale, Professor Hugh Beale and his team are um, thanked from the bottom of my heart and those of many of my colleagues for the huge amount of work you've done. Thank you so much. We are very grateful for this work and you do make our lives easier. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.